Um, first, a little bit about Nycoon Wind. Um, we are an offshore wind energy project developer. Uh, we have a single project. Um, we're Canada's first offshore wind energy project. Uh, we have offices in Vancouver as well as in Masset and Skidavid on Um We're a widely held, publicly traded company and um, uh, you can find us on the, the TSX Venture Exchange. And on to the next. Um, the project, uh, 396 megawatts uh, at full capacity, that's enough to power 130,000 homes. Uh, 110 turbines spaced about a kilometer apart, and we are in the ocean, and uh, we'll show you that in a moment. Um, we're uh, around 8 to 10 kilometers off Haida Gwaii and 95 kilometers from Prince Rupert. Uh, an example of one of the things, uh, we've been a lot of talk about consultation and engagement with communities. Uh, we received a lot of feedback early in the project development about how it's going to benefit the local community. And Haida Gwaii is the largest unintegrated area in British Columbia. They rely on diesel power for about 70% of their electricity generation. And our Haida Link component of our project would propose to, to send a smaller transmission line west to Graham Island and power the entire island, essentially hooking them up to the BC grid. Um, wind is clean and renewable, um, and we'll discuss some of the local benefits. And it is proven technology. The Europeans have been doing this for many years. And uh, in fact, the European projects are in the process of developing their second round of, of projects and thinking about their third. On to the next. So a project site map, if you're having difficulty seeing that, I think we did distribute some uh, pamphlets, and I think the map's on page 10, if I recall correctly. Um, you need three things for, for offshore wind. Uh, you need wind, of course, and in the Hecate Strait, we have one of the great wind resources in the world. Um, you also need a shallow seabed that's conducive to putting the turbines in, and you also need to be close to the grid. And offshore wind is quite limited in British Columbia because the grid comes to the coast only in two places, here in Vancouver uh, and then up at Prince Rupert. So we're about 95 kilometers from Prince Rupert and our main export cable would send the power from the wind farm to a point uh, between Port Edward and Prince Rupert. Uh, the wind predominantly comes from the southeast, created by large lows in the Gulf of Alaska. Um, offshore wind compared to onshore wind, um, stronger, more consistent resource. There's no interruption. Uh, the east coast of Graham Island and Rose Spit is a, a very flat topography, uh, makes for a, a very consistent resource. Next. Um, so you, if you work for Plutonic, you can climb in the power lines. What we can offer is dropping you in a helicopter at the top of our 80-meter uh, wind turbine tower uh, onto a platform about half the size of the stage here. Um, some people do do it, not for me, thank you. Um, generally, the turbines are located in 10 to 20 meters of water. We drive generally a single, what we call a monopile, into the seafloor. Uh, up to about 40 meters. The hub of the, of the turbine is 80 meters above the high water um, and the blades are approximately 100 meters across. So this is a, it's a large machine. Um, the project components, just a general layout, uh, there's a, a, a wind farm or array. Uh, all of that is collected in an offshore platform where it's then exported out to the, across the mainland cable uh, to a converter station on shore. We're uh, proposing direct current technology uh, for a number of reasons, including some environmental considerations. And as I said, to the west, the Haida Link cable. Uh, critical path, uh, we've got two processes going simultaneously right now. We're in the clean power call with BC Hydro, and we're also about to file our draft environmental assessment, um, moving towards uh, being in, in the water uh, in 2012. To the next. A little bit about our environmental assessment. Um, we are complete the study phase and we're entering into the assessment phase. Um, the key findings, um, nine broad assessments undertaken in both biophysical and socioeconomic areas. Um, 
the assessments indicate no significant adverse effects in any area. Now that's not to say that there aren't issues, important issues that have been brought up. Gujar mentioned a couple of them. Uh, and we have, amongst other things, uh, partnered with the Haida Nation on a long-term environmental monitoring program to keep an eye on the predictions we've made in that assessment uh, to make sure they hold true. Um, in addition, there's a number of positive benefits, uh, including improved air quality. Uh, the Hydalink cable alone would displace 26,000 tons of annual greenhouse gases, and then the employment and economic development on the north coast, which is sorely needed. Um, next steps, um, we're undertaking screening right now. The government's having a look at our proposal. We'll then have a public comment period uh, in May and June, likely, uh, and a 180-day review period by First, First Nations uh, agency and public, um, and anticipate a certificate in late 2009. And the HIDA process will be concurrent with that. Specifically to First Nations, uh, in addition to the HIDA, we're also um, working with the Metlakatla, the Laxwams, and the Gitgatla First Nations on the mainland. Uh, we've been working at this since 2002, um, and we'll talk specifically here about our relationship with the Haida Nation. Next. Um, and what we found is after that initial meeting uh, and the, the secondary follow-up, uh, in which many lessons were learned, uh, we, we came to realize that um, any, any business relationship was going to be built on a foundation of trust. That's getting to know one another, getting to know the Haida culture, uh, helping the Haida understand our business, and moving forward from that point. And until that's done, uh, there is no talking. So we spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, we think we've been successful at it to date, and that continues. We continue to learn and, and discuss and move forward. Um, one thing that we can do as a, as a private company is we can assume tenure. And it was talked about before, earlier in the day, um, we assume that it is the Haida traditional territory, uh, full stop, and we move forward on that basis. We also focus on building capacity. We've, we've talked, people have talked about land rent, um, and we've talked about this with the Haida as well. It would be very easy for us simply to pay rent uh, as you would with a farmer's field, if you put a, a turbine in a farmer's field. Uh, we want to do more than that. Um, we need to build a long-term relationship uh, that sustains. And taking this partnership approach does build that long-term agreement. It builds capacity in the, in, the, uh, um, in the community. An example of that, Guja brought up about the federal and provincial licenses. Um, we've worked together with the Haida Nation to help them create a licensing process for, for, uh, for energy projects. It also creates value, both for us and the nation, and provides assurance to our lenders, insurers, and others who are looking at our project, both to invest and uh, loan us money to build this project. What's this, what this has done is addressed um, Gujo's triple bottom line. Um, we've talked about clean energy. Um, Gujo talked about the high EA review, long-term monitoring, uh, employment and training. Our project uh, promises to bring about 50 permanent jobs um, to the North Coast during construction in, in excess of 200 positions. Um, we're spending this year developing our specific training program. Um, there's been discussion about that, getting people from the North Coast, high school students, into the trades to provide a basis for us to then train them to become wind turbine technicians. Uh, and then the revenue, uh, the economic opportunity and the ownership we've provided for the Haida. Um, and that really, I think, um, in, uh, summarizes our relationship. Um, and uh, we continue to work at it. We're not done and uh, we'll continue uh, to work towards developing um, the, the limited partnership to a point where we are the preeminent provider of um, offshore wind services on the North Coast. Thanks.